everybody, welcome back to our 30 day EKG challenge. Today is day number 10 and we're going to be going over ectopic atrial rhythms. This is a fun concept and a concept that I think is really important for us to um, really improve our ability to evaluate atrial depolarization. So uh, welcome. If this is your first video in the challenge, welcome. If you want to start from day one and build with me through all the, the days, go ahead and head over to the playlist that this video is a part of. So let's jump into it. So remember that uh, the atria typically depolarizes. Let's just review the typical depolarizing uh, waveform within the atria. Typical depolarization occurs from the SA node. And so the SA node sits high in the right atrium here. And the SA node fires off and is the pacemaker node of the cell. And when it fires off, it creates a wave of depolarization that spreads through the atria. Notice that this wave of depolarization, it goes from inferior to superior and from left or from right to left excuse me as it's traveling across the atria so this generates what we know as our sinus p waves and those p waves if they're going down into the left are going down towards avf and left towards lead one so we know that sinus p waves are upright in lead one and upright in avf obviously they're going to be upright in lead two if that's the case because it's also going down to the left. So remember that we define the sinus P wave as a typically paced P wave, meaning it's occurring at regular intervals, 60 to 100 beats per minute in a normal sinus rhythm with P waves that are upright in lead one and AVF. Those will be sinus um, originating P waves. Now what happens if the sinus node is not driving the atria? What if we have an ectopic atrial rhythm? Well, let's take a look at this EKG and then we'll kind of dive into the mechanisms. So first thing I'm going to notice is that when I initially look at this rhythm, maybe I look down here at lead two, I notice that initially it seems to be a nice regular rhythm. And then all of a sudden, the remainder of the rhythm is very slow. So I want to know what changed right here where this asterisk is. What changed? So what happened before and what happened after? I notice that before there's a nice narrow complex rhythm these QRS complexes are narrow, meaning that the duration, the QRS, is what? Less than 120 milliseconds, less than three small boxes. That tells me that this QRS is being generated from at least the AV node down because it's going rapidly conducting through those Hisperkinji fibers. And so now I'm like, well, what's driving this rhythm? And I see I've got these nice P waves that I'm noting in black right here. And those P waves, I want to make sure that they are of sinus origin. So I look up at lead one and lead AVF. And what I initially notice is that look at lead AVF. Look at the P wave here. Look at that P wave in AVF. It's inverted. It's inverted. And look at the P wave here in lead three and lead two. They're inverted. So these are negative P waves in the inferior leads, right? Leads two, three, and AVF are inverted. So when P waves are inverted, that means they're going away from those leads. And we just kind of talked about how P waves usually are traveling down. This P wave is traveling up. So this is actually an ectopic P wave, and that's ectopic P waves that are occurring before every single QRS. So let's talk about what might be happening here. Ectopic P wave arising from somewhere maybe low within the atria, maybe here. It's a focus within the atria that is overtaking the atrial depolarization. And it actually is firing off. And it's creating a wave of depolarization through the atria. And look at the direction that it's heading. It's heading up. It's heading away from the inferior leads, two, three, and AVF. And it's creating P waves that in those leads are negative, negative P waves. So this is a P wave of ectopic origin. But what happens whenever a P wave of ectopic origin fires off? Well, the first thing you'll notice is, look at this. This wave of depolarization spreads, and it actually, for one, it suppresses that SA node. So the SA node has to reset every time this fires off. So the SA node can't overtake the rhythm. But what also happens is that signal gets captured, just like any other atrial depolarization, it gets captured by the AV node which delays the signal like it usually does for 120 to 200 milliseconds, right, our PR interval, and then it sends that signal down into the ventricles. And we get ventricular depolarization, which creates 
the coupling to our QRS. So here we're noticing that we have ectopic P waves. These are ectopic P waves that are driving this rhythm, right? Look at that normal PR interval telling me that the AV node is conducting those P waves. And so ectopic focuses, it's not it's not a, a nodal cell. It's just a, a, a little it's just a little region of foci that is firing off. And so notice here where this asterisk is, all of a sudden that ectopic P wave that I see marching through, marching through, marching through, I look here and I don't see any ectopic P waves. So it seems like that rhythm stopped. Well, if the ectopic P waves stopped, like we said, why did the SA node not take over? Well, remember when the SA node gets chronically suppressed by an ectopic origin, the cytostone might be refractory for a little bit in the sense that it, it needs to regain its ability to pace. And so we get this long pause. And then look, we get another ectopic beat. We get a long pause. And it actually seems like this P wave looks a little bit different than a normal P wave. It might actually be a sinus P wave because this is lead two. And this P wave is upright. So we might actually have a sinus P wave. And then you see you get a long pause again where there is no sinus P wave, and then we get an ectopic P wave again. So what am I getting at with this rhythm? I'm getting at the idea that a focus within the atria can fire off and create an ectopic rhythm. And you can see that through this initial onset of the rhythm, it's firing off consistently. And it's probably been firing off for a long time. This EKG is a snapshot in time. It's like, what? A six second strip, 10 second strip actually, it's a 10 second strip. It's a very short strip. So this person's probably being chronically suppressed and their sinus node probably has developed a level of sinus node dysfunction. And we can almost verify that by looking here and we see there are no sinus P waves, maybe this one. So then we see what you get conduction through the QRS complex. So we have to take a look at the morphology of the QRS complex. You see we've got a little bit here. This is outside of the realm of this discussion, but you see we have a little RSR prime. We have a little RSR prime in lead V1. That's a right bundle branch morphology. However, it's a narrow complex QRS. So that's actually going to be an incomplete right bundle branch block in the setting of an ectopic atrial rhythm. Remember that we have to understand and define the anatomical regions that we're looking at. When we're defining the P waves that are driving the rhythm, we're looking at atria. We still have to evaluate the QRS complex because the QRS complex is from the AV node down and has nothing to do with this ectopic atrial rhythm, right? It's its own separate waveform. So here we have an incomplete right bundle branch block because we have a right bundle branch block morphology in the setting of a QRS that's still narrow. So it's not completely blocked, but it's a little blocked. And so what do we get here? We have an ectopic atrial rhythm that then breaks with evidence of what I would almost say is a six sinus syndrome where we only really get one sinus P wave. So moral of the story, every single rhythm that you see, you need to evaluate the morphology of those P waves and make sure you understand exactly where they're coming from. Sinus P waves, as we defined in blue earlier on the video, are gonna be upright and leads one and AVF as they head down into the left because that sinus notes it's high in the right atria. On the other hand, an ectopic atrial rhythm that is driven by a focus within the atria and an ectopic origin is going to create a wave of depolarization that is different and you need to look at that in all the leads. So that's what we see here. Hope this helps. If you have questions or comments, throw them below. And if not, um, thanks for watching. We'll see you on tomorrow's video. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.